All right, everybody, good evening. Uh, we will uh, try to pay attention to the waiting room here. There's still a few people uh, coming in um, as we as we go. Um, so uh, as I said a few minutes ago when I had my video off, my name is Alex Drake. Uh, I'm the director of athletics uh, at RTHS. Uh, I have been at the school since it started back in 2012 um, and have been, the, have been the AD ever since. Uh, I noticed uh, coming in a few uh, names I recognized, uh, I guess older siblings who are athletes and stuff. So that's cool. Glad we're getting some legacies in here um, as, well as, as well as some new folks. Uh, also joining us tonight uh, uh, is uh, Jared Franklin, who's our assistant AD, if you want to say hey. Bud, on the spot. <laughs> hey, folks, how you doing? Glad that um, everybody was able to get here. Um, glad that you guys are safe, and hopefully, uh, you're going to get a lot out of this. Okay. All right. So, um, what we'll do is just kind of go over a, a very kind of you know thirty thousand feet overview of the athletic department. Uh, talk about some of the more administrative stuff. This is not going to be terribly sports specific. Um, this is just kind of generic athletic department policies and procedures for the most part. And um, as, I, as I said in an email, we're going to actually have a sports specific um, open houses or info sessions via Zoom next week. Uh, we are finalizing the schedule for that right now. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from the track and cross country coach. He's like neck deep in track season right now. So uh, I don't think he's um, he's uh, had a chance to, to figure out something on his schedule, but uh, we have um, we have most of the sports uh, at this point scheduled for those sessions, um, and that'll be on a slide here toward the end um, tonight, and then uh, we'll email that out um, via Ms. Muhammad tomorrow or, or Friday from the office as well. Okay, so um, if you came in late, uh, like I said, if you could, please uh, fill out this form down here at the bottom. This will give our coaches the ability to have your information to contact you about any off-season workouts, uh, physicals, uh, paperwork, stuff like that, just to kind of keep you in the loop uh, as we head toward um, the the uh, the new season. Um, just saw one question in the chat covering anything related to the summer health and PE program. No, um, that is not related to athletics, so that will not be covered here um, tonight. So I'd recommend contacting the office um, about that one. Okay, um, so uh, like I said, fill that out. The QR code takes you to that form uh, as well. In case you miss it here, we'll have the link at the end of this presentation as well. So again, just kind of a brief overview of the athletic department, um, which uh, we're really proud of it at the school. We've had a, a relatively high amount of success in a relatively short period of time. Um, next year is the 10th anniversary of RTHS. There's gonna be some celebrations associated with that. It'll be our 10th year as a school. Um, the very first year we were open, we just had some club sports. We had basketball. We had uh, like some, some like XL Soccer World indoor soccer job. We had some teams there and we had cross country that first year, just some kind of basic stuff. Um, we were independent, and then we joined the uh, the NCHSAA, the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, in the fall of 2013. So next year will be year nine for us in the association. Uh, up to this point, we've been a 1A member of the association. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, the athletic association is divided up into four classifications uh, based on school enrollment size, 4A being the largest, 1A being the smallest. Um, so we have been in the 1A classification, but uh, starting with next year's realignment uh, in the fall of 21, we are going to move up to 2A. Um, so we are, uh, we're going to see a little bit of a change here in terms of who we see in the postseason and, uh, and stuff like that. So um, it should be interesting. We're going to be excited about that. Uh, we have 17 varsity sports. Um, we have, uh, we'll have a slide here in a minute that shows what those are uh, and kind of how those are broken out by season. Uh, there's six fall sports, six winter sports, and five. Uh, in the spring. Um, like I said, we've had a good bit of success in a relatively short period of time. Um, we have uh, won two team state championships uh, in the spring of 2019. Our boys tennis team uh, went 20 and one and won the uh, state championship in pretty dominating fashion in the playoffs. Uh, and then the following fall, our girls cross country team won the state championship meet um, out in Kernersville. Um, and we've had several state runner up finishes over the years as well. Um, I think four. We were state runners up in boys cross country three years in a row. Uh, girls track one year, almost got there. They were state runners up. Uh, and we got quite a few regional championships too. Um, we've had 12 individual state championships in track and field and tennis. 
uh, along with several, you know, all state performances and, and state runners up in tennis as well, including this past Saturday. Um, one of our boys tennis players was the state runner up in, uh, in singles. Um, we've won a total of 19 conference championships in eight years as a conference member. Um, there's the there's the breakdown of those uh, girls cross country has won the last four in a row uh, boys track has won the last four in a row. Uh, girls tracks won three out of the last four so and uh, boys soccer won conference this year as well so um, we've had a we've had a pretty good season uh, all told um, in 2019 and 20 uh, there is a, a competition that all conferences in the state have called the Wells Fargo Conference Cup and basically there's a point system and you get points based on where you finish in conference across all sports and we won that for the first time in 1920 um, I think we might win it again this year. It's going to be close between us and Raleigh, but uh, I think we're going to get there. Uh, and then we were third in the state cup for Wells Fargo Cup um, in 2019-2020 in 1A. So um, we, um, despite being a relatively new school compared to a lot of people we compete against, um, have had, again, quite a bit of, uh, of success. And uh, a lot of our programs are on an upward trajectory, which we're really excited about. And we hope uh, you get to be part of it. Um, as promised, here is the breakdown of sports um, by season. Uh, this is not what the seasons looked like this year because of the modified schedule due to COVID. The um, sports uh, calendar was just completely wackadoo uh, this year. Like girls tennis is playing right now, and they're usually a fall sport, for instance. Um, you know, girl, uh, boys soccer play during the winter this year, right? Um, so this is the usual breakdown. So in the fall, we have boys cross country and boys soccer and then uh, cross country and girls as well. And then girls golf and tennis and then volleyball um, and then boys and girls basketball, swimming and uh, winter track or indoor track in the winter. And then in the spring, um, boys golf and boys tennis um, and girls soccer. So basically the reverse from the fall and then um, track and field for both boys and girls. So that is the breakdown uh, of, of the sports that we, uh, that we offer. Um, as far as uh, another question we always get uh, pretty frequently is uh, against whom do you compete? Well, that's going to change next year because of uh, the new conference that we're going into. Um, this is our new conference called the Super Six Conference. Um, those are the schools in it. Uh, you can see the, the travel is not too bad. Everyone is in Wake or Durham or, uh, or Granville County. Um, the furthest drive there is probably Eastway Academy, which is about 40, 45 minutes, um, something like that. So not too terribly bad. Um, if, if you're familiar with our athletic program right now, I've seen some of the parents in here who are, who are experienced that in Raptor athletics, knowing we've been traveling to Burlington and Greensboro and Salar city and, um, all over the map for, for conference. Um, and that will not be the case, um, anymore. So, um, that's, that's who we'll be playing in conference. So again, everyone's pretty relatively geographically packed in compared to past uh, years and past conference alignments. And then over there on the uh, right-hand side is who we typically will play, uh, frequently play non-conference. doesn't mean every sport plays every one of those teams, of course. Um, but these are, I think we have at least one game scheduled with all of these schools and at least one sport in the 21-22 calendar um, so far. So. Those are the kinds of people that you'll see. Some are a little further away than others. Um, a lot of these are former conference opponents of ours. Um, like we were, we're in a conference with Chatham Charter right now, uh, Eno River Academy. Um, we've been in a conference with Voyager before. We're currently with Woods, um, Southern Wake, River Mill, Clover Garden are on our conference right now. Um, and then some newer schools like Triangle Math and Sciences in Cary. That's an easy trip for us to make. Uh, Granville Central is not very far. That's a big soccer rivalry we have going with them. So it just um, just kind of depends there. But that's typically who we'll, um, who we'll be up against. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, Coach Franklin is monitoring the chat. Um, so you can pop questions in there and then we will uh, we'll field those there. Please do not uh, um, uh, unmute and, and pop in because it, it can get a little chaotic there. Uh, a, a year of teaching class on Zoom has taught me that. Uh, we'll try to keep it relatively orderly. Uh, but if you have a question in the chat, we'll try to get to them when we can. Um, okay, so um, eligibility, again, this is going to be mostly kind of administrative stuff. Um, so the rule is that every um, semester to be eligible for the next semester in athletics, you have to pass five of your classes. Um, it says five out of six. Most people take six classes a semester. Um, regardless, you have to pass five. Uh, so if you're only taking five classes for whatever reason, if you've got two um, 
at RTHS, we call them seminars or like study hall periods, basically. You've got two of those and only five classes. You have to pass all of your classes. Um, and you also have to have a weighted GPA of 2.0, which is essentially a C average. Um, so if you're pulling down a C or better in everything, you will always be eligible for athletics forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So that's, I mean, you should be, you should be striving to be better than C, honestly. But if you are better than C, if you're C or better, you will, you will never be ineligible for athletics academically. Um, you also have to get promoted to the next grade level. So if, if the, like at the end of the spring semester, if you failed English and you don't get, if you don't pass five of your classes, you don't get promoted, you're ineligible the following fall. Okay, so it does carry over from year to year. Um, for ninth graders, you are immediately automatically eligible for mm -hmm. one semester. You essentially get one free semester um, coming in because they're not, they're not gonna base eligibility on anything you did in middle school. Um, so you're eligible automatically for the fall of your freshman year. And then starting in the spring of your freshman year, you will have had to pass five classes the previous semester in order to keep playing or be eligible to play, okay? Um, we do have an athletic behavior policy. Uh, we're not gonna get into that right now. I don't wanna be too negative. Um, and knock on wood, never had to do a whole lot about enforcing the behavior policy. Usually our athletes are um, on their P's and Q's and the coaches you know, enforce um, and emphasize good sportsmanship and all of that. So hopefully we don't have to get there, but there are um, some rules about, you know, getting detentions at school. If you're suspended from school for whatever reason, how long you're out, if, you know, if you're suspended out of school twice, you're ineligible for the rest of the year. Um, that'd be pretty extreme. That very rarely happens. Um, so I don't want to talk about that because hopefully we won't have to deal with it, but you'll get an athletic handbook over the summer and uh, you can look over that stuff more specifically then. Okay, um, some medical requirements. Um, you have to have a current physical uh, on file, has to be completed by a, uh, it says doctor, it can be any medical professional, it can be a doctor, a PA, a nurse practitioner, um, whatever, someone's a licensed healthcare provider, I think is what like, you know, the, the athletic association dictates. Um, you have to, there's another form saying you understand uh, all the risks associated with concussions and that you understand symptoms of concussion and, and that you should not play with one and all of that. Uh, things will all go over in preseason meetings and stuff like that. Uh, if you miss more than five days in a row because of any illness or injury, you have to be cleared by a doctor to return uh, to play. Uh, that's not just COVID. That's been, that, that's been a rule for years and years. If you, if you get the flu, for instance, and you're laid out for a week, um, you still have to get cleared by a doctor to come back. Um, so hopefully that won't happen to anybody. Um, they do have some, some COVID policies this year. I don't know. They haven't really said what that's going to look like next year. Um, basically, there was a rule this year that if you, if you contracted COVID or you had a close exposure to COVID, you had to be cleared by a doctor in order to return. Um, and there were, there were, you know, periods you had to isolate uh, before you could return and stuff like that. But I imagine that's with everything that's kind of uh, loosening up over the last couple of three weeks, I imagine that's probably going to be changing. They're going to let us know what those policies are probably over the summer. Um, and so hopefully no one gets COVID and we won't have to worry about it. But uh, it's, it's just a fact of life. I think virtually every athletic program that we compete against has had some sort of COVID incident um, over the last year. Our boys basketball team had to isolate for two weeks um, because um, one kid got it, another kid got it at practice. Um, both their parents were like assistant coaches. So it essentially just spread like wildfire. <laughs> and uh, we had a few cases there. No one got seriously ill, but we did have to shut down for a few weeks um, for that to pass. Um, so, you know, just one of those, you know, things about being super careful and, and not coming to practice or uh, games. If you feel sick, you know, don't, we used to, I think there used to kind of always be this unwritten rule that you could play, play hurt, you know, and, and fight through a cold or something like that in order to compete. Uh, so you're not going to let your team down. I think that paradigm has definitely shifted that we, you know, we don't want you being a hero here um, and trying to play when you shouldn't uh, or be there when you shouldn't, because um, it could into, it could lead to the end of seasons. There were teams, not at RTHS, but there were teams in the state this year who got a COVID case during the playoffs and it knocked them out. Like they, they basically had to fall out of the playoffs because of, of um, having to isolate. So um we do uh, take a little bit of your money um, for athletics. It's not something that we particularly enjoy doing, but uh, 
we are a very, very, very no frills athletic program. And um, if you've ever been to RTHS um, for uh, any kind of open house or you just driven through campus, you might realize there's no fields, nor is there really much room for any. Uh, so all of our facilities are rented, uh, which can be a pretty penny depending on the sport. Some are more expensive than others. Tennis courts are cheap. Uh, basketball courts are not. So uh, there is a fee that sort of defrays the cost of paying officials, buying equipment, um, awards and athletic banquet and stuff like that. It kind of comes out of that as well. Um, and that's the fee uh, structure there uh, at $75 for your first sport in the year, uh, 65 for your second sport and 55 for your third. So if you play, if you run cross country, like everything in the fall is 75, it's everyone's first sport. Then if you, you know, play basketball, it's 65. It is not a pay to try out thing. So you do not get billed for the athletic fee until after the roster is set and you're on it. Okay. So I don't want you to think you have to pay to try out and then you lose that money if you get cut. Um, cause that's not, that's not the way that works. Um, generally this is a little loose, but we usually ask that the fee be paid by the first game. So that gives everyone about two weeks after the fee, after the roster set usually before they compete. Um, doesn't really guarantee playing time. Um, it's, it's just, again, it's more of an administrative fee to, uh, to help, uh, defray the the expenses with running a high school athletic program at a school that has no on-campus facilities. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Again, feel free to put questions in the chat that we can get to. Um, as far as the schedule and time commitment, um, so fall sports, you know, this is always something that we have to, to clarify. Sports do start before school does. Um, the first day of fall sports this year is August the 2nd, and school doesn't start until the, like, 11th, I think. is that Wednesday. So it's, it's about a week and a half there between when, when sports start up and when we actually go back to school. The first games – uh, in the fall sports are the week of uh, August 16th. So uh, there's two week preseason there. Um, then winter sports start mid to late October. Um, spring sports are uh, middle of February through the middle of May, um, roughly. So um, we'll send out specific tryout dates, you know, several weeks ahead of time and, and all of that. So you kind of know when you're going to um, uh, be expected to be there uh, to try for the team. Um, generally, uh, Monday through Thursday, at least, you will have either a practice or a game or a competition or a meet or whatever for your sport. That's not always the case. Um, obviously, we have rain situations in the fall and the spring, especially um, for the outdoor sports. Um, there is typically not Friday practice. Uh, we do not, not many teams do practices on Fridays at all. Um, we do sometimes have games on Fridays. Basketball has games almost every Friday, uh, during the winter. Um, there's some soccer games on Friday nights. Uh, so it just depends. And, and Fridays are a pretty common or popular, like make, um, make up day. Like if we get a rain out on Wednesday, we'll just play Friday. Um, so that does happen. So you're kind of, you're asked to sort of keep your schedule clear during seasons. Uh, the worst case scenario is having to make up athletic events on Saturdays, um, which sometimes becomes necessary if we're like with a week left in the season and we have nowhere else to put a makeup game in the schedule, we've got to go on a Saturday. Um, so just be aware, you know, that, that could happen. Although I would say it maybe happens, what, what do you think, Jerry? Once, maybe once a year, that ha it hasn't happened at all this year. Famous last words. There's something. Yeah, roughly. It's not too bad. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen. I mean, the ADs and the coaches don't want to be there on Saturdays either, so we try to avoid it. Um, again, game days depend on the sport. Um, so traditionally, uh, volleyball conference games are Tuesdays and Thursdays. In volleyball, there's a lot of non-conference games on Mondays. In volleyball, soccer is typically Monday, Wednesday. Um, Tennis is Monday, Wednesday for conference games, although we have a lot of Tuesday, Thursday non-conference games this coming year. Basketball is typically traditionally Tuesday, Friday. Uh, non-conference can be any day, any night of the week early in the year, but once we get into conference play, it's pretty much Tuesday night, Friday night. Um, and you are expected to be committed. Um, you know, do not try out for a team if you've got 14 other things going on. You're only going to be there for like every other practice and one out of every three games. Uh, nothing's going to make a coach angrier than uh, than that. So. Um, 
you know, just if you, if you try it for a team, if you're going to take part, you know, um, the coaches certainly, they understand that things come up, you know, um, family situations, uh, unexpected uh, trip that has to be taken, something like that. But, um, you know, they certainly need to uh, communicate that with the coaches uh, and don't blindside coaches ahead of uh, like the day before. That's like the worst possible you know, situation. Like, for instance, this year in golf, you know, there was a, a situation where a, a girl emailed me and said, I can't be at the next two Mondays because of this and that. It was like a week or two ahead of time. It's totally fine. Not a problem at all. If I find out the night before that someone's missing a match, you're going to be kind of peeved. So just be, you know, be considerate of the, of the coaches uh, and your teammates um, in that regard. Okay, there was a question in the chat about uniforms. Uh, I'll just address that one real quick. Uh, I happen to see that one out of the corner of my eye. Uh, does the fee cover uniforms? Generally, yes. It sort of depends on the sport. Um, the school owns the uniforms for soccer, volleyball, basketball, the top seven in cross country, girls tennis. That's it. The other, the other uniforms uh, for track and cross country, like the lower tier cross country especially, um, golf, uh, boys tennis, and swimming, um, in those sports, what we typically do is we have an apparel agreement with Adidas that gives us like pretty big discounts, like 40% off retail on shirts, gear, uniforms, you name it. And so for those sports, what we have typically done, like in golf, my players buy their polo shirt and it's like 30 bucks at the beginning of the year and it's theirs to keep like they have to buy it once and like my number one girl has been wearing the same polo shirt for the last three seasons like she bought it once and she's good to go right um cross country singlets and, and tri singlets are obviously they're tiny they're super cheap um and so those are pretty easy to get swimming um getting people swim uniforms back and then reissuing the following year would be disgusting. So they do buy their own uh, suits and we have, a, and, and coach Cooper sets up a deal with um, somebody um, to, to do, to do that. Um, so yeah, we are branded with Adidas. Uh, we've been with them for the last uh, four years. We'll be with them for at least two more. Uh, all of our teams wear Adidas uniforms. Um, regardless of whether they are owned by the school or purchased by uh, the families, um, again, at a discount um, to use. Um, Adidas, Adidas, like team gear, spirit wear, and stuff like that, there's plenty of opportunities throughout the year to buy those things. Um, and, uh, and they give us a good bit of money for it. We get kickbacks, which allow us to buy nicer uniforms and better equipment and signage and branding and stuff like that. So they've been pretty good um, for us. Beyond the uniforms, some coaches do require other stuff and again, it depends on the sport. Uh, for one example, boys soccer, they all have a matching warm-up shirt that has their name on the back. And they buy that. And again, that's yours to keep um, players wearing to school all the time. Um, basketball will have like jackets and stuff sometimes that they'll wear to, um, to, to the games, you know, that they'll wear in the stands before they go change uh, in the locker room before the game or, or whatever. So it'll just depend. And those things will all be laid out by the coaches in preseason meetings and stuff like that. Um, let's see, let's go to the questions, uh, for stuff people didn't, um, answer. Coach, Coach Franklin is also answering some questions in here. Uh, we do have a trainer at all home events for soccer, volleyball, and basketball. Um, we have a trainer at those things and her name is Ashley Herbert and she is awesome. We contract with her. She's a paramedic in Cary, um, that we've been working with for a couple of years now. Um, and then even if she doesn't go to the matches for golf and tennis and swimming and stuff, uh, if there is an injury in those sports, she works with those athletes to kind of help them rehabilitate, go through return to play and stuff like that. So she's pretty cool. Um, what time are the practices in the games? Uh, it depends. Um, it, it just, it, with facility rentals, it, it kind of, you know, um, depends on, you know, whether the facility we're using has lights um, and stuff like that. So for us, home games, volleyball, soccer, and basketball all start at six o'clock. Basketball is a doubleheader, girls at six, boys at 7.30. Um, tennis is at four because there's no lights. Um, what else? Golf matches are usually three in the afternoon because you got to get nine holes in before dark. Um, swim meets could be any time. I think our home swim meets are at five. Uh, so it's kind of all over the board. Um, and then if we go on the road, it's just kind of a wild card. If we're playing a soccer match at a place that does not have lights, we might be starting at four, four thirty. 
um, playing a matinee, um, as it were. So it's just sort of, it, it depends. And we try to get that out as, as soon as we can. I think it's safe to assume that volleyball and basketball will always start at six for virtually everywhere. That's, that's pretty universal. Soccer, again, depends on lights. Okay. All right. Um, oh, as far as practices, uh, the average is probably for most sports is probably like 430 to six. Some of that we get out of school about four, so practice will start about half an hour after that, and then go till six somewhere in there. Basketball may go later. They, you know, they have one gym, so they'll take turns. Like boys will go late one week, and girls will go late the next, or whatever. So, golf practices are like four thirty to six fifteen typically. So, it just depends. Um, some parental su support. Uh, we uh, we rely very heavily on the uh, on the help of our, our parents. And we have a lot of very, very good ones, uh, some of whom are in this meeting right now, um, who have been uh, helping us with, uh, with teams for a while. Um, we do not have a bus at RTHS, so we do rely on parent carpool to getting, uh, getting student athletes to away contests. Um, basically, if student athletes have their license, um, you can, you know, we can um, they can drive to home games. Uh, you can get yourself to home games. Basically, there's no carpool to home stuff. You just get yourself there. Um, and then they can drive themselves to like close away games like Science and Math and Raleigh Charter and like Voyager and some of those. Uh, but if it's further out, if it's something beyond, say, 45 minutes, uh, we do a carpool just for safety reasons and stuff like that. There's usually a parent on each uh, team that coordinates that, the team mom or the team dad um, that uh, handles the uh, signups for, for driving. Essentially, just they ask every parent to just like drive to one or two matches and put a couple kids in the car and, um, and get everybody there. Um, snacks and drinks are usually coordinated. This year, we did not do snacks and drinks because COVID, but uh, typically, you know, like it'll be a parent rear cooler of Gatorades or something like that. So kind of thing um if you make the playoffs and have to travel like i mean travel for playoffs like we'll get a bus um for those things um like and, and you know it depends uh on on you know where we have to go like if there's a playoff game and we're playing someone like voyager we're probably not going to get a 700 dollars charter bus for that but if we have to go to um uh what's a good one um manio oh yeah we had to go to manio a couple times in soccer We'll, we'll get a bus for that one or East Carteret down on the beach in Beaufort. Yeah, we'll, we'll get buses for that. We sent the basketball team to Mitchell County Mitchell. this year, which is on the Tennessee state line, uh, way up in the mountains, um, three and a half hour bus ride. So yeah, we'll take care of transportation on stuff like that. Um, Wasn't there Camp Lejeune one year? Lejeune was girls soccer one year. Yeah. We rode a bus all the way down there and got rins like six, nothing. I remember that. So Boo. Long way to go to lose that pack. Um, yeah. Um, we, do have a, we do have a fundraising arm. They didn't do a lot. There, there wasn't much fundraising going on this year because we couldn't like talk to each other, you know? So um, uh, we do have some really good parents who are involved though pretty heavily um, and, and, and help with fundraising. We also have a student athlete advisory council called the Raptor Student Athlete Council that, um, um, Again, we started this year and then they didn't have the opportunity to do much because we didn't have a lot of home events and stuff like that. And we couldn't really coordinate fundraisers if we weren't on campus and everything. But um, they'll be working next year to kind of like promote the athletic program. And uh, they won't really, students won't really be directly involved in fundraising, but they can, you know, promote awareness of the athletic program, get our name out there and stuff like that. So um, we, in that regard, we, uh, we do what we, uh, what we can. Um, Paperwork. We don't have the paperwork packet yet. We're still waiting on one of the forms from the Athletic Association to be finalized and released. I think they're putting the finishing touches on one of them. Um, and once that, once we have all the forms for next year, we're gonna we'll create a big old PDF packet to send out that you can fill out. Um, so everyone has to have. It's basically a student athlete information sheet. It's just like your name, contact info for your parents, emergency contact that's not your parents. There's some consents, you know, uh, about medical treatment and stuff like that that's on that form. It's pretty, pretty boilerplate, like, here's my name, here's my address and stuff. Um, medical history and physical is the big one. Um, you, physicals are valid for 395 days. Uh, it's 13 months instead of 12, because that way, you know, sometimes like insurance companies only pay for a physical like once every calendar year or once every 365 days. So you get kind of 30 days of a grace period there on those. Um, now here's the caveat, and this is, the, this is a policy that we've had for a couple of years now, and it always seems to trip somebody up. Um, 
but to try out the physical has to be valid for that entire sports season. So in other words, the physical you turn in cannot expire mid season. So for instance, if you try out for a fall sport in August, your physical must be good through the end of October for golf and tennis and through the middle of November for soccer um, and, and um, cross country. Okay. So uh, because that if miss, you know physical is going to expire mid season, the coach misses it. We end up getting fined by the athletic association. That's happened before. Um, it's, it's it makes it too hard to keep track of. So essentially, uh, you have to have a physical that will be good through the entire season, or you will not be allowed to try out. Um, my recommendation, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is get a physical this summer. There are places like Emerge Ortho. Um, and fast, what they call fast med, like the urgent cares and stuff like that, they will do relatively cheap sports physicals, um, sometimes as little as like 10 or 15 bucks. And if you get your physical in June, it will not expire all of next year. You can turn that thing in in July and know that you are covered for the entirety of the school year. It makes everyone happy. You don't have to worry about getting a new one mid-year and pulling them out of school to go to the doctor or something like that. I don't have to run you down asking for a new physical. It is glorious. So please, nothing makes me happier than getting the physical paperwork in or the paperwork packet and seeing the physical was done on like July 14th. Warms my heart. So I strongly recommend getting that done. And a lot of doctor's offices, like I said, or clinics will do specials or special sports physical nights where you can go for like 10 bucks and just have, a, have the doctor do the physical on site. No appointment, just walk in. If I find out about those, we'll email those informa that information out uh, and, and let you guys have that opportunity to do that. Um, but that is, again, that would be wonderful. Basically, from this point, if you get your physical right now, mid, as, of, you know, as of this point, if you get a physical tomorrow, it'll be good for all the following year. Um, any idea if a camp physical is the same as a sports physical? Um, maybe, but the physical has to be, we have to have it filled out on the athletic association's form. We cannot take any other form. That is, a, that it comes directly from the state. That is a state regulation that we cannot get around. So um, that form will be in the in the paperwork packet um, that we send out. Uh, hopefully, as soon as possible. Maybe as soon as tomorrow if they get that form to us. Um, there's another form about concussion awareness. I mentioned that earlier. Um, you know, concussions are a major issue in uh, in high school athletics right now. Um, you know, we're basically you know taking extra special care to make sure we don't. Um, exacerbate brain injuries and stuff like that. Um, there is an eligibility statement, some consent waivers from the athletic association, and then there's a sportsmanship pledge where you promise to be a role model and exhibit uh, good sportsmanship and represent our school um, well at all times. So um, those are the forms you'll need. Again, we will get that out to you as soon as possible. You can, once I send that paperwork packet out, you can go ahead and fill it out and send it back in. The sooner the better. Uh, we'll go ahead and check you off for the, um, for the next year. Um, one thing I do not have in the PowerPoint here is uh, something about tryout tickets. So the way this works, the way it works basically to uh, help the coach know who is cleared is about two or three weeks before tryouts. So sometime at the second week of July, an email will go out to everyone uh, with the dates and the times and the locations for all of the fall sports tryouts. And there will also be a link to uh, what's called a tryout ticket registration form. So what you have to do is fill that form out. It's a, Google, it's a Google Doc. It's a Google form. Fill that form out. Once that form is filled out, I will go through. I verify that your forms are in, that your physical is current, that you're academically eligible, and you, you meet all other eligibility standards, residency, and all of that. So once I've determined that, you will receive via email a tryout ticket that is good for the fall season. And you have to show that ticket, just a, it's a PDF like on your phone or whatever. You have to show it to the coach the first day of tryouts. And that's how they verify that you're good. Especially if you're a freshman, they don't know you from Adam when you go in on day one of tryouts, right? So, you know, they have to, they have to verify that you are, that you're all set. Um, and you will not be able to try out if you cannot show that, that, uh, that form. Okay. All right, so I mentioned sports specific information sessions. This is tentative, probably 99% final, uh, except for the sports that we're missing. 
um, on here. Uh, I will, we'll have all this sent out tomorrow once we actually finalize the schedule. But uh, starting next Monday, we're going to have sports-specific info sessions. Same Zoom link as this one. Uh, and I'll put that in information that'll be sent out via the office to rising ninth graders. Um, but this is when we're going to be doing, uh, doing info sessions next week uh, and the week after that. So uh, again, still waiting about tracking cross country um, and still trying to figure out a night for volleyball. But other than that, the other sports uh, are, are there. Okay, so we will send this information out. Feel free to screenshot that or take a picture of your screen if you, if you wish. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I will not be in those sessions, except for the golf one, because I coach golf. I'll be in that session. But other than that, it'll just be the coaches uh, going over team-specific information, uh, summer workouts they're wanting to do. Summer workouts uh, are done by most of our sports. Uh, they are never required. They cannot be required. Um, they are purely optional. They certainly help your chances of making the team, because you're hopefully going out there and getting better um, at your sport and getting some one-on-one, -on -one, you know, per more personalized instruction and stuff like that. Um, not all sports do a lot of summer workouts, especially the fall sports do. Um, obviously, a lot of the winter and spring sports will wait until school starts and then do some off-season conditioning. It just kind of depends. Um, basketball is already talking to me about getting gym, gym time for, for summer stuff. So basketball will definitely be doing some stuff. Girls tennis will for sure be doing some summer workouts. Uh, we'll do some stuff in golf. Uh, boys soccer always has summer workouts. Um, and then girls sock, girls workouts usually come like in the fall, like toward the end of the boys season. So, um, cause they don't start until February. Volleyball will have summer workouts as well. And cross country typically will have meetups. Uh, sometimes during the week, sometimes on, during the summer, they'll like go out to Umstead State Park on Saturday mornings and do group runs and stuff like that. Just depends, but you can find out about that if you go to their info sessions. And again, we'll get you a full schedule with all of the teams uh, on it here, here soon. Um, Okay, uh, I am basically done. This is also, remember, if you came in late, please fill out that form so we have your information uh, to give out to the coaches so they can know who to contact and build their mailing lists and uh, uh, stuff like that. Um, do you need your physical in place to attend summer workouts? Yes. Um, we, you do not have to have all of the other paperwork for summer stuff. Um, you don't have to have all of that until tryouts, but to, tr to do any kind of physical activity, you do have to have uh, the physical turned in. Yes, good question, thank you. Um, you can, we can do the hand raise feature if you want and I can call on people if that's easier. Oh, uh, Coach Drake, I'd like to make a little plug for the weight program. Oh um, yeah, we can get in the weight room again, let's go. We can get in the right. weight room again. I'm still waiting for our admin to kind of give us specific numbers. I'm also the strength and conditioning coach at the school. Um, that's gonna look a little differently especially during the summer and into the fall because my wife is uh, 33 weeks pregnant right now. So as soon as that baby comes, I'm probably going to be a ghost for a little bit. So I'm trying to work out a way to where we can have some coaches in there, somebody in there to kind of keep it going because it is extremely important uh, to lift. If anything, injury prevention We've been bitten really hard with injuries in really crucial times in several sports seasons in our history. But we have – what we have works. We have very good equipment. The school has been gracious enough to really put a big investment into this. And me, uh, Mr. Drake, myself, and Coach Theoda actually built it. We built all the power racks and everything. So – We'll be getting information out like that, but it is highly encouraged that student athletes attend it. It's an enormous difference for what you're going to see over the course of your athletic careers here. Yeah. And it's for all sports. You don't, I mean, you associate it with like, I think probably basketball and soccer any more than any others. Like we're going to have white regiments for golf this summer. Like I'm already like doing research on like stuff my golfers can do um, to increase, especially core strength and stuff like that. Um, so, so yeah. Um, some other frequent questions I'm just thinking of that things people ask a lot. Um, one is where do you play? Uh, we get that a lot because I, I harp a couple of times on the fact that we don't have facilities on campus. So the question would be like, where, well, if not there, then where? Um, again, it kind of depends. Uh, so volleyball home matches are at Hope Valley Baptist Church, uh, which is near Jordan High School in Durham. They have a gym that we've been using for many, many years for volleyball. 
Um, so we'll be there for uh, volleyball. Some ba uh, basketball practices uh, sometimes are there too. Um, basketball games are traditionally at Kestrel Heights, which is the middle school about a mile down the road from us. Uh, we use their gym for most of our home basketball games. We occasionally play home basketball games at Voyager Academy. Um, just depends on availability of the gym and stuff like that. Uh, soccer games are at Mills Park Middle School in Cary uh, on their stadium field over there. We've used that as our main home field forever. Once in a blue moon, we have to play soccer matches in Durham, uh, which is at old, usually Old Chapel Hill Road Park, which is over kind of near um, – it's all 15501, kind of like near Githens Middle School, if you're familiar with that. Um, we use that, we use that uh, field of practice a good bit. Uh, pra soccer practices are oftentimes at Wake Med, soccer park and carry on the practice fields there, um, or sometimes at Herndon Park or Old Chubb Hill Road in Durham. Uh, tennis is Elmira Avenue Park in Durham up near NC Central. It's a brand new, uh, new, brand new tennis courts. They're super nice. Um, the coaches are really excited about playing there now. Uh, golf's home course is Falls Village up off Highway 98. Uh, what did I miss? Oh, cross country. Cross country does practice on campus. They're the, one of the only sports that does regularly. Cross country and track will practice on campus. Um, our home cross country meets are at Lake Med Soccer Park um, in, in Cary. Um, swimming practices at Silverton Pool in Cary, usually. Uh, home Swim matches are at Campus Hills Rec Center in Durham, which is pretty close to the school. It's off, off of uh, Alston Avenue. Um, we have a lot of swim matches, uh, swim meets at um, uh, TAC, Triangle Aquatic Center in Cary. That's where Raleigh Charter swims, and that's where uh, regionals and conference and stuff are typically. So, so yeah, that's uh, those are all of our homes. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're, we're a regional team. We're in Wake County. We're in Durham County. We're all over the place. But uh, – um, we do you know, our best to, to make it work um, and, and all of that. So, um, oh, another frequently asked question, are there cuts? Uh, that's what all the freshmen always want to know. They're going to try out and just get cut uh, first couple of days. It depends on the sport, um, honestly, and, just, and, and frankly, it depends on the number of people who come out and how many people the coach can or wants to keep. Um, so, the sports that almost always have, like boys basketball always has cuts. Every year there's more tryout, people who try out than people who could be on the team feasibly. And so he always cuts people. Um, boys soccer has had cuts for the last several years. Um, I cut, I had cuts in boys golf this year. Couldn't believe, first time that ever happened. Um, boys tennis usually makes cuts. Um, volleyball will have cuts. Um, those are ones that are more popular and, and try out for. Um, Generally, uh, the track and cross country coach, uh, Coach Swepson, the sw Coach Cooper who does swimming, um, will keep virtually everyone um, and, and try to just find an event, event for you to compete in, you know, or whatever. Um, girls tennis has not in the past done cuts, although that's becoming a bigger team. They had like 13 girls this year, which is pretty big for a high school tennis team. So uh, that might, we may end up having cuts in that sport in the, in the future. Um, so again, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of depends. Girls soccer has not in the past few years had cuts. They have before, but it's not as common. So just depends. Any other questions from anyone? Okay. Well, in that case, um, thank you to everyone for, uh, for coming on here and um, look forward to seeing some people out at summer workouts and uh, in, um, uh, in tryouts in the fall. Like I said, please get us your information uh, so that we can uh, get that information uh, out to you, sports specific stuff, and also paperwork and forms and, uh, and all of that, uh, all that fun stuff. And uh, we will, uh, we will be in touch uh, with all of that. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, this has been recorded. If you need to go back and uh, watch it, we'll send the link out to it uh, as well if you missed something. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you. Thanks.